If you've watched our previous videos on MLA style, you'll recall the two basic concepts that form the underlying structure of the citations, core elements and information containers. In this video, we'll discuss core elements. These are the bits of information given in a specific order which describe the work you are citing. When put together in order, these elements create a citation. In the containers video, we compared the citation to a mailing address, and we can continue the comparison here. The core elements are like the individual details needed for the post office to get the letter to the right person. Each of these details, the name, the house number, etc., bring an added piece of information to ensure the letter gets to the right place and the right person. In citing a source, the core elements are bits of information like the author, the title, and the date published. Depending on the type of source you have, it may also include locational information such as volume and issue numbers, page numbers, or website URL. Remember, you want each citation to lead your reader to the same source you used, so you need to provide enough detail to ensure you're both looking at the same source. So let's get on with this. I'm going to demonstrate the process of creating a citation through the use of a blank template. You may not always need to use a template, but it's very helpful to use it the first few times you create a citation until you become more comfortable with the process. Different types of blank templates are available on the library website and are linked in the video description. Instead of using a template, you can also simply write or type the core elements you need in the order given. As you create your citation, you will also want to have a guide handy, such as the library's MLA 8th edition guide or the Purdue OWL guide, also linked in the description. These guides will explain in detail when to include each element and how to format it correctly. To demonstrate, I'm going to cite this online news article. The first two elements, author and title of source, you will have for almost any source you use. Notice that with each element I need to format it to match MLA style. For example, the author needs to be entered with the last name first, a comma, then the first name, and middle name if given, then a period. Specific rules apply if there are multiple authors or if there is no author given. The guide will tell me what to do in each of those cases. Now I continue to the next element, which is title of source. I'll look at my guide for directions on how to format. Each principal word of the title is capitalized. And in this example, I put the title in quotation marks because I am citing an article, a small part of a larger work. Notice the period goes before the ending quotation mark. I'm going to continue working my way through each element and either entering relevant information or skipping elements that don't apply to the source. You can see I really need a guide to show me what each element is for and how to format those elements I do use. I've now entered all the relevant information. You can see here that I skipped many of these elements because they didn't apply to my source. Now, if you use the template, you can copy and paste the citation into your document. There you can correct spacing or other typos and change the paragraph formatting too. Now it's your turn to try. You can do this. With practice, MLA becomes easier and easier. And remember to go to your instructor the Writing Center, or the Library for help in creating your citations.